here in the honeysuckle so not the not the biggest antler I've ever found but it's got some character hopefully he'll be uh, he'll be pretty nice next year hey everybody Eric here uh, out at the family property one of my last times to go out and look for some shed antlers I wanted to talk about why I think it's important for deer hunters to go out and, and look for shed antlers uh, three main points. Uh, number one, it's a great late season uh, scouting technique to go out and, and find these antlers. Two, it's a good opportunity to get out in the woods and just enjoy nature. Uh, get some good exercise by walking and you'll find if you go out there and do it quite a bit, you'll do a lot of walking. And third, antlers are just cool. You can do lots of different stuff with the antlers and that's one of the things that we'll talk about. So the first point is antlers, looking for antlers are a great late season scouting technique. Uh, one of the things it can tell you is this is a set that I happen to find, have found this year. I'll be definitely looking for this guy come next fall. But since I did find his antlers, there's a real good possibility that he made it through the hunting season and he should be bigger and better next year, which I think all of us would agree is what we're after. The other thing it tells us is if he dropped his antlers in a particular spot, chances are he's there for a reason and he's going to be there again. Not necessarily during the rut or maybe during the early season, but if he was there in the late season this year, he'll probably be there in the late season next year. It gives you a good opportunity to try to pin him down. The other thing that the late season scouting will do for you is it allows you to see the trails. Here are some pictures of trails that I took uh, in February, uh, clearly showing how the ground is torn up as the deer walk over that soil that is repeatedly frozen and thawed, making those trails very easy to see. This time of year, especially around here in the late winter, early spring, the temperature is always rising and falling and the ground is freezing and thaws and that makes the soil, uh, with the soil expanding and with being frozen, it makes it real soft. And as the deer travel those, those trails, it really makes them stand out and makes them very easy to see. So it's a good idea to get out there in the early spring, late winter and go look for those antlers. The second point that I wanna address is it's a great excuse to get out there, walk around in your hunting area, scout out new areas and basically just spend time out in the deer woods uh, with work and family obligations and all the other things that we have in our lives a lot of times it's difficult to to get out there and spend time out in the woods and i don't think anyone will argue that it's good for you to get out there and, and enjoy the woods if you're going to look for the antlers you're going to log a lot of miles i know i walk a lot of miles uh, not because I'm particularly good at finding the antlers, I don't have any big key secrets, but you, you walk a lot of miles and that's just good for you. Uh, my doctor tells me all the time I need to get out there and, and go on an oxygen diet, as he says. Go out there and, and burn those calories. And to go along with getting out there and enjoying nature, the other thing you can do is to take your kids out there with you. Have them walk around and enjoy the outdoors. Show them a little bit about nature. Uh, get them interested. Help them get interested in the outdoors. Uh, get them away from one of those screens that they're probably spending way too much time looking at. Put that uh, video game controller down and go out and spend time out in the woods. Uh, and to keep them interested, you may want to take uh, an antler that maybe you have from previous years 
and go strategically set that somewhere in the woods where you, know, you can point your kid in that direction let them go find it and help keep them interested. And finally the third point about going out there and finding those antlers is antlers are just cool. Uh, I love having them around. I, I use them as uh, personal decor in my basement. A lot of antlers down there decorating the walls uh, in what my wife calls the man cave. There are a lot of neat things you can do with antlers. A little search online, you can see that people have made lamps out of them. They've used them as handles for fire tools. Uh, I personally have a pen and pencil set that someone made for me out of antlers. Um, I've used an antler that the squirrels chewed on uh, to make a door handle down in my basement. Uh, lots of different things that you can do with the antlers. Uh, one of the other useful things you can do is you can make rattling horns out of your antlers. Um, this is a pair of antlers that I found on uh, the property where I live and they are both the same side. You can make sure that a little tip though is make sure you cut the brow tines off so when you crack them together uh, you don't bash your thumbs together. Uh, Here's another set that a good friend of mine gave me. This was a matching set. As you can see, we cut the brow tines off of them so that when they come together, uh, I don't mash my thumbs and fingers with those brow tines. So just a couple things that you can do with your antlers. Now, as far as tips on finding antlers, well, I know I'm really, as I was saying earlier, not that particularly good or gifted at finding antlers. I find my fair share, but I know quite a few people that find a lot more than I do. Some of the places where I've had some of the most success are on field edges, and typically when I find antlers in the field, they're almost always within 10 to 20 yards of the field edge. Very rarely do I find them way out in the middle. Uh, so that's a good spot to look. Another place are trails leading in and out of bedding areas. That's usually uh, another area where I've had some success around late season food sources here in Southern Ohio. Honeysuckle is one of the better places to look. If I can find a good patch of honeysuckle, I may be able to step on an antler there. The other place I like to look is where trails cross fences. Um, I think that when a, when a buck jumps a fence as he lands, the shock of hitting the ground can sometimes be all that that antler needs to break loose and fall to the ground. Uh, so that's usually where I try to focus my, uh, most of my attention. But the best thing I can tell you to do is just get out there and cover some ground. Enjoy the woods, do a little scouting, get your kids out there, get some exercise, and hopefully if you're lucky, you'll be able to pick up some really cool antlers. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the deer woods. All right, it's pretty late in the year for your optimal shed hunting time. Um, it's early June, so a lot of the antlers already been picked up by uh, other shed hunters or myself. Or the vegetation is starting to cover them up and conceal them, make it harder to find them. But there are a few key places that I still haven't been able to look at on this property. So found one way over on the other side of the property. So I've walked a couple miles now, crisscrossing back and forth. But there's one little spot I want to check, uh, and it's a fence crossing. And it's as hopefully it, uh, it'll pan out. So we're going to head down this way and go check it out. One of the last places on this property that I like to check, and it's a very heavy fence crossing up here. And we'll see if it works for us. So as you look, you can tell uh, it is definitely, you see where they're jumping the fence here and you can see this is their, clearly their landing area. It's got uh, pretty worn out. There's some deep prints in it right there where they're jumping the area here and we'll look on the other side and see, oh, <laughs> I almost didn't even see it. See it right there, tucked in the vegetation there. Let me reach over and get some stuff out of the way grab a hold of that yeah oh I know this deer looks like he's been doing some fighting uh, it's got that broken off let's let's come back over here and 
to get a better look at it. So, so yeah, I know this guy uh, passed on this buck uh, in November. Now, when I saw him in early November, uh, he had not broken off that G2 right there. And he had, I remember he had a lot more junk. So you can see he's got, sorry about that. He's got a little point right there that he broke off. And he's got another one right there. If you can see, see if he'll focus on it. You can see right there. It a uh, little kicker point right there where he's broken it off. So this guy was doing some fighting. So real happy about this one. That's a good find. So hopefully uh, we'll get a better look at him this upcoming season. And uh I'll be able to find his antlers still attached. So, all right, that's about enough for today. I'm gonna head on back to the truck.